Hey, Justin Abel here with STL Tones, and today I'm excited to bring you another great update to the Control Hub platform. There's a bunch of new, really cool features that I'm excited to take you through, so let's just go ahead and jump in. The song that we're gonna be using today is by Brittany Bradford, and the song is called Can You. Okay, so here's the plugin, and if you've used Control Hub for any amount of time, you'll notice that this looks a little bit different. So the main part of this update that's really exciting is that you can now drag the modules around to make them in in any order that you would like, or you can just get rid of modules by clicking the X in the top right hand corner of them. If you're looking to add something new, you can click this plus sign, which will pop up your options for, you know, say I wanna start a chain with a transient designer into the color section. And then right after that, I'll have the reverb into a limiter, you can do whatever you want. The sky's the limit. If you're done choosing modules in this list, you can go ahead and just click the X on the top right corner, or you can always toggle it on and off by using the plus sign right here. As you can already tell, this adds a lot of functionality to Control Hub that has not previously been there. So, you know, if I wanted to make a really long reverb that was a vibey reverb vocal throw thing, usually I'm going to be putting reverb and delay first I actually, I'd probably have an EQ before it, then reverb and delay, and then a color section, like some sort of some sort of overdrive, and then maybe a compressor and or limiter. So I could I can tailor the plugin to exactly what I want. The signal flow is as you would expect, from left to right. You'll also see that there's an update to the metering. So it still has your input and output faders with a phase flip at the bottom. But now if you click this up arrow, you'll get your stereo selections and also your mix knob. Okay, now let's pull up some artist presets and see what we can do now that we can move our modules around. So let's go to F Reed Shippen. And it's too soon to say where this will go, but we both know what we're hoping for. Think of all the doors we could open. Okay, so that's sounding good. Usually I'll put a de -esser, uh right after my first initial kind of cleanup EQ. So let's go ahead and move the de over here and get this set. Only think of all the doors we could open if these brick walls were pictures only painted on porcelain. And it's too soon to say where this will go. Think of all the doors we could open if these brick walls were pictures only painted on porcelain. And it's too soon to say where this will go. But we both know what we're hoping for. Okay, let's check out some stuff on acoustic guitar now. I think I'm gonna add my own color to this. So I really like how that sounds, but something that's fun to do with acoustic guitars is before you're adding any sort of driver compression, to just put a really small room on them just to give them some space and help them kind of just sit back in the track. So, so let's just try some of this Detroit stuff. It's really interesting sounding. If these brick walls were pictures only painted on porcelain and it's too soon. So I'm liking how that sounds. Let's go ahead and listen to the reverb before the color and compression and then I'll move it after and we can hear the difference. So you just get a lot more consistency of the reverb with the reverb before the color and compression because anytime the guitar kind of goes down a little bit, usually the reverb will pump up a little bit and it just kind of makes it feel like the mic was actually a little bit farther away from the guitar and I really like that. Okay, last example, let's just try some stuff on the drum bus. So let's go really extreme and then we'll use this as like a parallel process. I'm 
gonna go in and I'll add the transient designer. So like I said, we can open up this menu right here and there's the mix knob. So let's just go all the way down and then I'll just blend it in. Yeah, in the original mix, I was really just wanting these drums to sit way back, but that works really well, I like that. Okay, now let's talk about some other functionality improvements. So now under the traces tab, that is going to include your compressor traces, individual models, merged presets, every, every kind of trace that you can make is all going to be stored inside of that one folder. As always, if you just click on the name, it'll open it up. So JWA compressors, these are just compressor traces. So you'll see that that changed this. These are individual models. So if I do that, that also changed that only. But if you click on something like Mixbus, that's going to change the entire plugin too. So now let's talk about the trace exchange. So if I click the button, you'll see that it looks different. This is called list view. So this is a new functionality feature that it actually has infinite scroll now. So if you just grab this and you go down, this is gonna show you all of the uploads to the trace exchange. So super awesome. You can also click this grid mode right here and it'll go back to the normal way that the trace exchange is operated with an infinite scroll as well. You can also click on this all bubble up here and you can filter to the different types of traces. So say I'm just looking for individual models, just color stuff. You'll be able to click that and it just filters the entire trace exchange for just that. Or if you're just looking for compressors, uh, it's pretty self-explanatory, really cool. Another update to the trace exchange is that you can upload what's called trace packs. So that means you're uploading entire folders from your traces up to the trace exchange so people can just download multiple traces from you at a time. So I'm gonna upload this JWA individual models and you can go ahead and type a small description for people. And once you type in a description, you can just click upload and just like that, it's on the trace exchange. So if we go to filter by trace packs, so you'll see it right here. You'll see that it says three traces. If you click on that, it'll show you what the traces are called so that you kind of know what you're getting into. You can click download right there. And once you save that, it'll go into your traces folder. I really like this feature because it adds to the collaborative spirit of the trace exchange to just allow you to upload a lot of traces at once or to go to the trace exchange and download a bunch at once just to, just to be able to have new flavors and collaborate with other music makers around the world. Okay, and those are the newest features to Control Hub. I hope you enjoy them. I hope it helps you make great music and great mixes. If you haven't downloaded the newest update yet, feel free to just head over to stltones.com for that. And if you haven't tried Control Hub yet, feel free to head over to the website as well for a trial. Thank you for watching this video. I'll catch you next time.